The last time we met, we looked at John 6th chapter, the 63rd verse. This is Jesus speaking. It is the spirit that quickened it. Uh, it's the Holy Ghost that gives life. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. It's always going to be a case where somebody doesn't believe. That's the reason why it's best for you to know the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself. Now, he said it is the spirit that make alive. What causes the word of God to be alive is the power that indwells that word. And that power is called the Holy Ghost. You cannot separate the word of God from the Holy Spirit. In other words, you cannot have the word of God without the quickening of the spirit. The spirit of God has to make that word alive to us. And what has happened with believers, they get full of the word, but they do not allow the Holy Spirit to quicken it to them. So they can minister the word, they can speak the word, but there is no power. So we want to live a life of power. We want the word, we do not want to per se handle the word with our hands, so to speak, or with our mouths, uh, with our will or our emotion. You don't want to handle it like that. Because it's just like going to school and bringing forth a history, a lesson or something like that. But in order for that word to have power, it has to be made alive inside of you. The word of God is called the living seed. The word of God has power in it and that power or that energy comes from the Holy Spirit. When we receive Jesus Christ as Savior, our spirit man is regenerated by the blood. We're born again of the spirit of God. Our spirit man has been recreated in the image of God. It is energized or it gets its spiritual energy from who? The Holy Spirit. Regenerated by the blood of Jesus. You receive Jesus as your savior. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells you. And it also supplies an energy energizing you. The indwelling is for two purposes, character building and for power, character building, you born again gives you the right. Baptism in the Holy Ghost gives you the, the might or the power. In order for this living word to grow, it has to be in soil. It's a spiritual word. It's incorruptible. The soil has to be prepared to receive it. This is the soil right here. So then the Holy Spirit also prepares our ground with the word. The legal side of redemption is what God did for us in Christ on Calvary's cross. The vital side of redemption or the living side of redemption is what the Holy Spirit does in us through the word. You can't have the word by itself. You got to have the word and the Holy Spirit. You can't have the spirit of God by itself because he only acts on the word. So then you really can't enjoy the word without the quickening of the Holy Spirit. So now we make up our mind that we are not going to accept the written word of God unless it is what? Quickened by the Holy Ghost. Now, when it comes to the flesh, first of all, speaking of humanity, this is when Jesus Christ came in the flesh. He partook with us of a flesh, bone, blood, body. But yet, he came in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh, but yet he was without sin. He condemned or he judged sin in the flesh. Then you have flesh as the disposition of sin. Flesh as the disposition of sin, this is where you have the works of the flesh. Before we received Jesus Christ, our nature was that of the disposition of sin. You receive Jesus, the blood of Jesus comes in and it breaks the power of that nature. In other words, you can say no before you couldn't. Sin dominated and controlled us. You also have flesh that is used to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and to worship him. It is the flesh, flesh as in the natural man or flesh as in an unyielding believer. In other words, you're not yielding to the word of God and the spirit of God. So then remember now, a person that operates in his carnality can't receive nothing from the Lord. 
You operate in the flesh. Yeah, we flesh, blood, and body. Can this word be germinated in your flesh? Can it be germinated in your intellect? What was the word of God designed to germinate? In your spirit, man. So this is what we got to tune into. If you want to be full of the spirit of God, you have to be full of the word of God. You got to let the spirit of God use that word to cause you to grow. Come with me to Proverbs, fourth chapter. When it comes to the living power, the living seed, and we find out that Jesus said, the words that I speak, the words that I speak, they come out of his spirit. He had the spirit without measure. He says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. These are Jesus' words. They're called the living seed or the incorruptible seed. We find out that it is spirit and life that is in this seed. It is the Holy Ghost that causes the word of God to germinate. The Holy Spirit causes the word to germinate in your spiritual ground. When it germinates, it brings forth. It starts a creation process. So you can't have the word unless you got the life with it. And that's the Holy Spirit. Now, if you can understand this. It'll be more easier to operate in the word of God because you know that Jesus spoke these words and they are in the containment of it is spirit and life. These words are alive. They are more powerful and active than any two-edged sword. His words are alive. So why would you speak anything else? The Holy Spirit also causes the word of God to assert its own vitality. Assert his own life. The words for healing. If you sit, the spirit of God can cause that word to go in there and move stuff out the way and assert its own life to bring forth whatever it's supposed to be. So assertion. Its own life. Isn't that something? You got a spirit in you that this word grows in. Whatever your need is. You plant that word in there. Faith and patient, and you keep under the authority of that word, that word will grow in you and bring itself to pass and manifest itself through you. See, now that's God. That's God and his spirit. The Holy Spirit also causes the word to reveal its meaning. The Holy Spirit will also cause the word to reveal what it means. You can go to your reference books. I go to reference books all the time, but I pray over it to make it my own. If you can make it your own, you can minister it. Not in the pulpit. You can be washing dishes and minister. Who are you ministering to? To the Lord? So you want to put yourself in a position to minister to the Lord. If you can minister to the Lord, he can minister through you to other people. Because you've been ministering to him. The other thing that it does, the word of God by the Holy Spirit will prove to you that it is divine. Why? Because it's going to bring itself to pass and you can say, boy, that ain't nobody but Jesus. So see, the Holy Spirit with the word can do all of this. And what we've been doing, we've been operating the word. Oh, get in the girl. You need to get in the word. You just need to study. What, what happened to the spirit? Nobody never said you need to get into the word and allow the Holy Spirit to quicken the word or make the word alive to you. We just talking about, oh, they not in the word. They need to get in the word. And so it's a little bit more than that. It's a quickening power that comes with that word. Proverbs 4 and 20. First thing it says, my son. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it says as those that are led by the spirit of God, if you're going to be led by the spirit of God, you can't be led by the spirit of God unless you've got his word. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit will only lead you through the word. Oh, girl, I was led by the spirit to go over here and do such and such. You was led by the spirit? The Holy Spirit only works through the word. So as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the who? The sons of God. So as far as I'm concerned, Proverbs 4 and 20 is talking to me. He said, my son, a hero Lee, a Ruth, a Dorothy. The first thing he tells you to do is to attend to his word. You give attention to my word. Why? Because it is a lie. My words have the spirit of life. Jesus says my words are spirit and life. So he's telling you to give attention to the word, the living word, the written word, the spoken word, the word that man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, because it is bread itself. It's nourishment for what? The life inside of you, the life within you don't feed off red beans and rice. It feeds off of God's word. 
He says, my son, attend to my words. The second thing he tell you to do, incline your ear unto my sayings. Why? Incline your ear to my sayings mean you have to what? You have to hear the word. Faith cometh by hearing. You can only hear the voice of God as you hear God's word. You don't read and study. You ain't going to hear him. You don't spend no time with him. He ain't going to spend none with you. So in order to hear the word of God, he says, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. What is he talking about? What you going to hear? Okay, you're hearing me now. As I minister to you, the Holy Spirit is imparting faith into your heart from the message that I'm ministering. Spirit-filled words, faith-filled words, and truth-filled words. All of this is the virtue that comes out of the word of God. As I minister the word to you, your spirit man has ears. Your spirit man has a mind. And see, this is what the Lord endeavors to use the word to get in here to minister to you. Pastor always say you had to have circumcised ears to hear. But if you don't make yourself attend to the things of God, you will not. Because of what? Flesh is always in opposition to the spirit. Always contrary to the spirit. Every time you do something, you've made the choice to do it. If you are to live moment by moment, every time you get ready to take a moment step, you have to make a choice. Whether you're going to do right or whether you're going to do what you want to do. You were bought with a price. I call it a right of purchase. God purchased me through Jesus Christ. So I don't have any rights. So then what must I do? Do the word. Do the word. Well, I, I want to do this. Okay. You want to do this? And when you do this, where is it going to lead to? Well, I think I better do this. <laughs> we do it every day. Every day you make decisions. Look what he said. Verse 21, let them, them words, not depart from your eyes. He's not talking about you looking at them like this. He's talking about the word of God not departing from the eyes of your understanding. This is where the eyes of your understanding are. He that has ears to hear what the word is saying, let him hear. He that needs to see what the word is saying, let him see with the eyes of his understanding. The spirit of wisdom and revelation for what? That the eyes of our understanding be what? In light. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. The word of God only works here. It only works inside. Once it gets inside, then it disperses itself out. Well, how do I get the word in me? The word is not thee. Where? In thy mouth and in thy heart. So you hear the word, you speak the word, and the Holy Ghost produces the faith. You speaking spirit-filled, faith-filled, truth-filled words, and you hearing them. Where else they going to go? Now, your spirit man got to want to receive it. If your spirit man don't want to receive it, guess what? It ain't going in there. I don't believe that. So it ain't going to go in there. That's the reason why you read the word for yourself. You study for yourself. Personally, I just believe that I supplement your diet. Because you're supposed to have your own time of study praying and reading. This is a supplement to what you do. If you pray and study and reading, and this is a supplement, it doesn't matter whether you listen to my tapes or not, because you have a working relationship with Jesus, and this helps you on the way. But it'd be better to listen to the tapes. Now, you got to keep them in the midst of your heart, but they got to be kept what? Alive. You just can't just take the word of God and just let it dump there and sit there. It has to be active. Active. That means you go what? Do it. It's not that. What's your intent? You got to do the word. For they, them words, are life. Only to those who find them. If you're not seeking, knocking, and asking, and looking, that's seeking. You ain't going to find them. The words of God are hidden. They're only made alive to you by the Holy Spirit. That means you got to have the Spirit of God indwelling you. The Lord's words are spirit and life. You got the Holy Spirit in you, and that Holy Spirit makes your life spirit and life. For they, and they approve their divine power, if you seek to obtain and appropriate, you got to receive them, think on them, and help to all their flesh. See, you want this healing? See, people go around, they thinking the Lord that I'm healed. 
Once the enemy attacks your body with something, I don't differentiate between a headache or cancer or a hangnail, all of them can take you out if left unattended. People die from headaches all the time. So then you learn to make God's word your medicine. You learn to make God's word your medicine. How? In my mouth. You take your medicine three times a day? Come over here and take this three times a day. Holy Spirit, open my eyes and my heart to receive my medicine. Because my spirit man is what's alive. And my body is plugged into my spirit. So when I take my medicine, that word go flow all to my digestive system, to my lymphatic system, to my muscular system, to my skeletal system. Name all them systems. My circulatory system. Strong lungs. Healthy bones. Strong legs. That's how you do it. My legs got to acting up. I didn't say anything. I just got up and I said, now, Lord, I want to thank you for the covenant that I have with you. I know what it is. It's trying to produce a fear. See, when stuff come against you, it wants you to get scared. And I said, well, Lord, I have received you as my savior, my covenant partner. I have received you as my healer. I didn't do no kind of repenting because I could have been sitting in the wrong. Well, I sit down and watch the game for however many hours. So then I start getting up doing stuff every time to get a commercial. And it got nothing to do with age. It got to do with the what? The word. And so then right then it just left. I have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear. Lord, I trust you for my body. I trust you for my finances. Your word says you have a need. The Holy Ghost will call to your remembrance what Jesus said in the word about your need. Then the Holy Ghost will tell you the moment to apply that word for that need to be met. But you got to be what? Full of the word. How the Holy Ghost going to talk to you about what Jesus is going to say if you ain't got no word in you? Or uh, if you want to have divine power in your life, the spirit of life, and you need to grow. You need to know what the word say. How the Holy Spirit go help you grow and acquire power in your life if you don't let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. He can't. Well, I go to church. I read my Bible. There is no quickening of the Holy Spirit on them words. I'll come into church. Oh, like prayer? See how the Holy Ghost just took hold with us just for that instant. I love it. I'm just minding my own business praying. Drop. Drop. <laughs> Hold up. And you just stay up there. When he come down, we come down, we through. You want the spirit of God. You want the spirit of the Lord in your life, and you can't have him unless you got the word. That's the living side of redemption, what the Holy Spirit is doing in us through the word. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. Now look at this. Listen to this right here. Keep your heart. With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. That means stuff you hear? <laughs> no, I'm keeping my heart. No, no. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. What do you mean the issues of life? Everything that I need is in the word, and the word is in me, and the spirit of God is in me. The issues of life. This will keep you with energy. This is what keep you alive. Your issues. Okay, them issues right now. What do you think I'm doing? I am depleting the issues of life out of me. Why? I'm pouring out my heart to you. I'm putting forth the word of God. So what you do? When it's all over with, I just go replenish it. I ain't crazy. I go and replenish it. <laughs> okay, come with me to... Luke 8, 49. This is when Jairus' daughter was dying. And Jairus said, come and heal my daughter. And then the woman with the issue of blood stopped him and all that. He said, daughter, be of good comfort, your faith. What was her faith? In Jesus. It was in the doctrine she spent all her money. But her faith was in Jesus Christ. Why? Because she heard. She heard of everything that he had done, including healing people like her in her state. So verse 49. While Jesus yet spake, there cometh one from the rule of the synagogue's house, Jairus, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Your daughter dead. Don't trouble the master. But when Jesus heard him say that, he answered Jairus, saying, Now, what are his words? His words are what? Spirit and life. 
So he go tell Jairus words that contain spirit and life. He told Jairus, first thing you deal with, don't care what you do, you deal with fear. Lord, I got to deal with this fear. Lord, I'm telling you ahead of time, I'm scared. What you scared of? You tell him what you scared of. I'm scared I might lose this, scared I might lose that. Tell him what you scared of. Don't be scared to tell him what you scared of. How can he help you if you don't acknowledge you scared? <laughs> you, when you come to the Lord, you got to come in faith. That is faith. You going to tell the Lord you scared? The first thing he going to tell you, he going to help you deal with the fear. And if he tell you fear not, which he did, guess what the fear got to do? Get up and leave. <laughs> no, Lord, I want to hold on to this. I, I like being scared. Oh, they have people that feed off of fear. They like that. They program that way. And they Christians. Why? My people perish for what? Like a knowledge. They don't know about what we're talking about. They die today or tomorrow, they go to heaven, but they scared. You got some people, every time something happens, they run to the doctor. Fear. They don't know it because it's a part of what? It's a part of their anatomy. It's a part of them. If you got a relationship with the Lord, <laughs> he's not going to let you not know you don't, you have it. You know, he's going to let you know. Because he let me know about my leg. He let me, with Jackie, every time Jackie would go to LSU, she'd have to drive over the bridge. i pray. Fall on my knees and pray. To the time I thought she got to school when her class was over. That was fear. Until I learned, Lord, <laughs> this is what I would do when she would leave. I would take a piece of paper, write her name and her going to school on it, and I would ball it up. And I said, hi, Lord. And I cast it over. And that's how I do. And sometimes you want to go back over there and pick that paper up. But no, I left it there. See, that was a, like a point of contact, a release for me. We're talking about somebody driving from Rosedale over the bridge and going to LSU and getting into the traffic and all that. And then I'd always let somebody in or through. Why? Because I had a daughter. I'm playing seed, Lord. <laughs> Jojo, we ain't had insurance. The insurance was too much. I told the Lord, uh -uh, we ain't paying no insurance. I ain't worried about that. I just dealt with that. We didn't have no insurance when Jackie was driving. Now look, when you know to do better and you have, you do. We didn't have no money to pay for no insurance on no car, so we didn't pay it. Insurance was just as high as the car note, so we didn't pay it. Now I have insurance. Amen? But anyway... Look, so he says, Luke 8 and 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let stress. Stress will put you in the hospital. Stress will cause your heart to stop. Your blood stop flowing through your veins. Stress will kill you. The stress starts down in here and manifests itself in your head. Fear do anything to you. Everything. He said, fear not. But then he go tell him what you put in the place of that fear. He said what? Believe only. See, all things are possible with God if you believe it. Anything that's impossible, God can make it possible. Jack, I got to tell him. She didn't buy her parking permit because she didn't have the money. And she told the Lord, let me park right here, Lord. And please don't let me get no ticket. And please don't let me get told. Let me park here until I get the money. She did all that to the Lord. And the Lord said, okay, for six months. Knew she had the money to pay it. What did she do? She didn't pay it. At a what kind of time? An appointed time. So what did they do? They gave her a ticket. They didn't tow it away. They gave her a ticket. So then she goes before the Lord and she repent. She had to repent because she knew she had the money and she didn't pay it. So, okay, what's she going to do? Says Jesus Christ was delivered from my offenses and raised again from my justification, and that's the same prayer I prayed for Aaron. And so it was in that good ground. And so that conscience says, "No, you do not have to pay that ticket." And right there, I repented and I asked the Lord for His mercy because He's the Father of mercies. And when I went to appeal it, I told the people that I was wrong, I messed up, and I'm asking for mercy. And I told them who I was and where I worked. And the following Monday, I would go buy my parking permit. The rules and regulations says you cannot say that you do not know the rules and regulations. And you, you cannot say that you do not have the money. If you do, it will be thrown out. You will also be charged another $5 fine. That happened to me the last week in February. And then four weeks later... I saw a credit on my account at the bursar's office. And so I, I emailed the people and they told me, no, they had nothing to do with that. But all finances go through the bursar's office. 
And so, you know, faith and patience, I didn't get mad, I didn't get upset, I just, you cast that care over to Jesus Christ, and I'm justified by faith. I went ahead and waited. The next four weeks, which was like a total of two months, I emailed them again, and the lady told me to email parking, and then that's when parking told me that my ticket had been voided. And doing a fast on my fast sheet, I wrote for that ticket to be eradicated. And so they emailed me say that the ticket was voided and for me to contact the bursar's office, and they would refund my money. And so the lady emailed me said they would send it to me direct deposit. So I gave them my bacon information, and the rest is history. See? It took eight weeks. Eight weeks, but faith and patience. Faith and patience. And she... After four months do come harvest, that happened to me, I believe, the last week of September. And in January the 30th, I had placed an order for some weighted boxing gloves. They sent me two. And it was the $30 that they took took from me. It was given back to me in another pair of boxing gloves. <laughs> Mama, you got some boxing gloves. Okay. <laughs> See, if it's impossible, you're going to get glad. If it looks like it ain't working, you ought to get glad. Why? Because you laying hold to the things of God. Now, if you ain't laying hold to them, I ain't nothing I can do for you, but pray for you and ask the Lord to have mercy on you. But you want to know the Lord for yourself. You want to know that it's the Lord. And so Jackie can know who the Lord is without going through all the rigmarole that's in this world system. He makes himself known to her personally through what does come to her. I just thank the Lord for the Lord. See, not that's a life of power. That's a victorious life. Faith and patience. Okay, let's skip on down to, look, he said, fear not, believe only. See, now look, fear not, deal with the fear, believe only, and she shall be made whole. That is perfect soundness, spirit, soul, and body. This is what be at stake. You get rid of the fear. You get your scripture verse. You stay with it. You stay under the authority of the word because his words are spirit and life. If Jesus said it, it's going to come to pass. That's the reason why you use what the word say. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. Why? Because they was on the same page he was on. And all wept and bewailed her. But Jesus said now his words, spirit and life. But some people don't believe. Weep not. She is not dead, but sleeping. Now they weeping and all of a sudden they laughing at it. So see, when things are going on, it's not that you don't want nobody to know. You don't want them to know because they don't believe like you. They not trusting the Lord like you. They going to come in there and mess up everything with their what? Words. Words. When you believe in the Lord about stuff, don't be telling nobody that they'll talk you out of it. And they last him to scorn knowing that she was dead. Like they to give up life. And he did what? He put them all out. You don't invite people in. So you don't have to put them out. <laughs> and he took her by the hand and called. See, everything is done according to his purpose. If you don't know what the word says, you don't know what his purpose and callings are. Saying, now he said this, made a rise. Look what it says, and her spirit. So then he spoke words, his words are spirit and life. He spoke to her spirit. Now here's the thing about it. God was in him during the work. Diversities of operations where they had working of miracles, special faith and gifts of healing. But all of it, the Holy Spirit did it. And her spirit came again. See that? See what happens when you don't fear. See what happened? You get your hundred dollars back. And not only that, she gave ten dollars righteous giving off of the hundred dollars. <laughs> Don't leave Lord out the money because he'll, he'll multiply the money. He'll increase it. And she arose straightway and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. So see, God's words are spirit and they are life. You got to submit yourself to the word. You don't really want to handle the word of God with your, so to speak, when I say handle with your hands, or with your mind, your intellect, or with your mouth, unless, unless it is what? Quickened by the spirit of God. That's where the power is. The power is when it's been quickened by the spirit of God. Okay, any questions on anything? I hope that helped you. Amen. That's an excellent testimony concerning the word of God. See, and it's patience, see? And all that time, the Lord was getting her to change her point of view. 
think the way he thinks. He just kept on telling, hold on, Jackie, I'm coming, just stay there.